and verse number 33. Amen. Let's read. And the king was much moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. Could you stretch your hand towards heaven and ask the Lord to help us tonight? Father, The Lord began to deal with me this morning, and uh, I don't claim to be the most spiritual person you've ever met, but I do know when God speaks to me. And I felt like tonight He's going to be speaking to a very, very specific group of people. Very, very specific group. And I felt like he's going to be talking, if you would help me just a little while, to some of those that range from the age of about 14 to about 40 or plus. I felt like that, you said that's a, that's a, big, a big stretch, but there's a reason that I felt like the Lord dealt with me about that. Now, that don't mean if you're over 40 that, that you can't help me. Amen. So, And it might, it might apply to you, but I felt specifically like the Lord was going to talk to folks in this building tonight. And I, I, really, I really would like the altar call tonight to be I, I, I asked you if, the other day if it'd be okay. I would like the altar call to, tonight to, to be a little bit where we can get to you and pray for you. All right? Because a lot of times we, we, get, we get up here and we, we get nailed down all over. And God might want somebody to pray for you. That just, just, so tonight, tonight if, if, it, if, it, if it goes this way. Maybe in your need and help. Just just get as close to this front as you can get. Just just get as close to the front as you can get. Uh, there's some good folks here that want that wants to pray for you, I'm sure. But if the Lord would help us just a little while tonight. <clears throat> I want to preach on a very, very serious subject and I uh I feel like the Lord wants to help you with it. I'd like to preach on shattered dreams. Tonight, shattered dreams. Amen. The uh, the Lord dealt with me a, a, just just a phrase a, a few a few moments ago, and, and I knew that I was gonna, even though I was trying to talk God into letting me preach something sweet, you know. I, I, I was trying to, and He said. Uh, he told me, he said, I needed to deal with some things that folks do when they're young that affects them forever.
when the Holy Ghost comes in and begins to move already in the beginning of this service, it must mean you need to hear what I need to try to preach to you. I want to talk to you tonight about four different people, basically. First of all, I want to emphasize who this king was that was much moved. This was, this was David. And as he went up to the chamber, climbing the steps over the gate, he began to cry as he went and wept. You see, he had just received some traumatic news. And he cries out, Oh, my son, Absalom. My son. My son, Absalom. Would God I had died for thee. Oh, Absalom. My son. My son. I want to talk to you just a little while tonight. And if I could, I want to introduce to you four different people. First of all, I want to introduce to you Absalom tonight. Second Samuel chapter 14 and verse 25, the Bible says, But in all of Israel... There was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he pulled his head, for it was at every year's end that he pulled it because the hair was so heavy on him. Therefore, he pulled it and he weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. This young man, this young man, Absalom, had more potential than you can ever imagine. His beauty was beyond compare. When folks looked at him, they said, that's the king's son. When you looked at his beauty, you admired him. Every young man wanted to be like Absalom. All the young ladies of that day noticed Absalom. I want to talk to you just a little while. The next one I want to introduce to you, and we're going to read about her in just a few minutes. Her name is Tamar. She's pure. She's a king's daughter. She's tender. She's beautiful. She's loving. She's Absalom's sister. Now I want to talk to you about another man. Another young man. Introduce him to you. You'll see where I'm going in a few moments. His name is Amnon. He's the king's son, but he's Absalom's half-brother. Now, I want you to understand. He's David's eldest. 
If you go by the way that it went in those days, he's in line for the throne. But something's wrong with him. When he looks at you, it's a different look. There's not pureness in his eyes. We would say, that young man has problems. That young man, we'd probably say it today like this, you got issues. You got issues. And then I want to talk to you about another man. His name is Jonadab. He's a cousin. A so-called friend. He's deceitful. But he's persuasive. He's the kind of young man that every mama tells their son, don't go around him. Don't go around him. Now, for the Lord to help me just a little while, I'm going to preach real slow, but not real long. I'm going to bring it to the point because the Lord dealt with me today that There's some issues. There's some things that God wants to help you with. There's some areas God wants to change in your life. There's some things in your heart that needs to be got out. And this ain't no way to to end revival if that's how it ends tonight. But I want you to know this is how God's got it for me tonight. Now I want you to look closely because... And I want you young people to look at me right now. Because all it takes is one event to shatter and to alter lives forever. It can be five minutes. It can be an hour. It can be a car ride. It can be a phone call. It can be a trip down to the mall. It can be going over to a friend's house to spend the night. It can be couples getting together for an innocent night of fellowship. It can be a lot of things. It can happen in a lot of ways. It can take place in a lot of different places. But it's just one event, young folks. Are you listening to me tonight? It's just one event that sometimes destroys lives for eternity. I need to talk to you just a little while. I need to, I need to slow this down tonight just a little bit, but I feel the Holy Ghost because I, like, I feel like you need to listen because those events are presenting themselves to you right now. And you need to get a hold. In Second Samuel thirteen, we find out what's really in Amnon's mind. You remember the boy I introduced to you, the one with issues? You remember him, don't you? You remember the boy that I talked to you about, Amnon? Amnon did have issues. There's something happening in his heart. There's something happening in his mind. There's something eating on him that he can't get rid of. There's something pulling on the inside of him that he needs to tell somebody about. 
There's something driving him that he can't get away from. There's something pulling him as if to be pulled by a chain and it's dragging him down and his mind can't get off of it and he, he thinks about it night and day and, and day and night and that one thing is not right in the sight of God. You see, he looks at Tamar. You remember? Sweet Tamar. So beautiful. So pure. So innocent. And he desires her. He desires her so much. Brother Mike Brooks said it becomes overwhelming to him. That it's got so much a hold of him that he just can't seem to even go about everyday life. And there that day he's, he's standing there with John and Dab and, and, and he's thinking about Tamar and, and finally he talks to somebody but he talks to the wrong person and I want to warn you tonight you better be careful who you're talking to you better be careful who you're listening to you better be careful whose directions you're following you better not be going to those that know nothing about life and asking them advice whatever happened to asking mom and dad whatever happened to asking the Sunday school teacher and the deacon and the pastor what are you mean asking folks that knows nothing about life. And now, now he's talking to John and Dab and and John Dab says to Amnon, You're the king's son. Why are you sick? You got everything you need. And Amnon lets it out. I want my sister. I want my sister. But I can't. Here's what you do. John Adab speaks to him and you can hear the subtlety in his voice as he begins to talk to him in the mouth of Satan speaking through him. And he says to him, make yourself sick. Go to your dad and tell him you believe that you could eat if your sister Tamar would just come and fix it before you, you could eat of her hand. Amen. And then do what you want to do. Help me preach to you just a little while. I'm not going to get it too plain tonight because there's children in our midst. But I want to get it plain enough for you to understand what's getting ready to happen. I want you to understand tonight there's an innocent young girl getting ready to walk into a trap. Did you hear me? I said there's an innocent young girl getting ready to walk into a trap. I said there's an innocent young girl getting ready to walk into a trap. So Amnon does. As that thieving, slithering, worthless, good for nothing slime Jonadab advised him to do. I want you to know right now, Jonadab was nothing more than a mouthpiece of Satan. And I want you to know he'll ruin 25 or he'll take 25 young men and young ladies that he's already got to ruin one young girl or to ruin young one young man. Are you listening to me tonight? I'm a talking to you. Hey Amen. I said I'm a talking to you. And here I can see it. Oh, Brother Darrell, it breaks my heart. 
Here I can see it. This young girl goes in with pure intentions. She's going to do what her father asked her to do. She's going to cook for her brother. And when she gets there, that lust is conceived. That inordinate affection is run wild. It's going mad inside the mind of that man. And he sends everybody out except him and Tamar. I'm being very careful because of children how I word this. But then an event happened that shattered Tamar's dreams. Then an event happened that shatters that girl's dreams. She's a king's daughter. Surely someday she'll be given to a chosen man amongst Israel. But now because of the sick dreams of a of a brother that's got issues, now those dreams are crushed. And I I see her now. And now that the event's over, with the same more so desire that he had to be with her. He wanted her out of his sight. Get up! Get out of here! I'm sick of you now! That's what the devil does. Oh, how many have you seen, brother? How many have you seen? Where the devil just tore apart. Where the devil destroyed and then sent them away. How many homes have you seen wrecked because somebody said a kind word? Somebody got on the internet. Somebody did something they shouldn't have done. Somebody said something they shouldn't have said. And all at once, your dreams are shattered. And the virtue and the happiness and the purity has been wiped away in one day. What of it? What of it's about ready to break this family apart? What of it is getting ready to destroy more than you ever imagined? What of it is getting ready to damn lives into hell? What of it? What of it? Tamar clothes herself and morning and clothes of morning and she takes off the 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 king's daughter's robe and she puts on mourning and, and she runs out and she runs in to the arms of her brother. And Absalom Absalom wipes her tears. You can see the love. Don't doubt it. You can see the love on Absalom's face because he pulls her close to him in my commentary. And he said, don't speak the matter to no one. Just come to my house. And there is where she remained and Absalom loved Tamar so much he even named his daughter Tamar Absalom never said nothing but here I want to, I want to take time to insert this warning David heard of the matter but he did nothing about it I want you to know right now one of the worst things you can do mom and dad is to be silent. 
Sometimes you've got to know when to speak. Sometimes you know, you've got to know when to say no. Sometimes you've got to be, even though it might hurt their feelings, and even though you might have to be not be their buddy for a little while, sometimes you've got to raise up and you've got to look at them and you've got to say, no, you can't do that. No, you can't go there. No, you can't be that. Help me preach to you just a little while. Sometimes, mom and dad, you've got to make the difference in somebody's life. So are you going to help me just a little while? I said, sometimes, mom and dad, you need to make the difference in somebody's life. Oh, God, where would some of us be if we didn't have a mom and dad that said, no, you can't do it. No, that's going to hurt you. Oh, thank God for praying, moms and dads, that knows what it is to get a hold of God and follow the leading of God, sweet Holy Ghost. But now, Brother Jeff, it's, it's went beyond it's went beyond David taking care of it, and it's it's went into the heart of Absalom. And now it's digging deep inside of him and and it now time passes and every day he thinks about what was done to his sister. And every day he looks at Amnon who's next in line for the throne. He looks at that sick, twisted individual that defiled his sister. And every day, Absalom knows he's no good. He's no good. Amen. Instead of going to David and demanding justice. Amen. But it's, you know, when you've got, when you're the king and things happen in your life, people like to cover that over, don't they? They like to they like to shelter that and cover that over because they don't want nobody finding out what's going on in the palace, do they? Help me preach to you just a little while. I said, they don't want everybody to know what's going on. Help me just, I want to talk to you tonight. I'm trying to help somebody in this building. I can almost see it now, though, that it gets out of control. And Absalom now is so bitter that it's turned from bitterness to anger. And it's turned from anger to hatred. And that hatred has conceived. And now he's planning murder. I mean, he's got murder in his eyes. Where did it stem from? One event. Where did it stem from? One person. Where did it stem from? From one action. Help me preach to you just a little while. I want you to be careful what you're doing. I'm talking to somebody right now. You need to be careful what you're doing and where you're going. Amen. The devil wants to destroy you. And when he takes you down, he'll take your family with you. When he takes you down, he'll take mom and dad with you. When he takes you down, he don't care who he hurts. Send your sons. It's time for me to shear sheep. Send your sons to help me. Dad. David consented. And Absalom had it made up in his mind. Absalom had it made up in his mind. The moment... Now, and I want you to know right now, Amnon is a king's son. He's David's son. He's David's firstborn. You ain't gonna just, you just ain't gonna grab a hold of him if you're just a normal man. Because he's gonna rip you to shreds. He's gonna hurt you in just a little while. He's a king's son. Whether he's got issues or not, Amnon is a king's son. So he told those young men, he told those young men, don't mess with him until he gets drunk. 
But when he is well drunk, then you fall upon him and you slay him. Amen. Help me preach to you just a little while. He's still, he still got power in his own. Don't mess with him until we get him real drunk, drunk. And when we get him real drunk, I want you to put the knife in him. I want you to fall on him. I want you to slay him. Help me preach just a little while. And, I, and Amnon began to drink, forgetting all about two years ago at the weeping of a little girl. But in that ears of Absalom that night, all that Absalom heard was Tamar weeping on his shoulder again and again and again. And all he felt in his heart, I'm going to fix this once and for all. I'm going to take care of this problem once and for all. And there, that night, in Absalom's house, he slain his brother Amnon. What a bit! What a bit! One event now, and you've got Tamar's life shattered. One event now, Amnon's dead. One event now, and all of the king's sons are afraid of Absalom. One event now, and Absalom's fleeing for his life. Amnon's dead. Tamar's defiled. And Absalom's fleeing. I've got to jump places here quickly. I don't want to lose you tonight. I've got to jump quickly. I don't want to spend time, though I could. And I'll introduce him to you in just a minute. But Absalom messed with the wrong man. Absolute mess with a real killer. Absolute mess with a bloodthirsty man. And he couldn't get, he couldn't get Joab's attention to talk to the king. So he sent his servants out and he, he set Joab's fields on fire. Amen. And that got Joab's attention. But you don't want to get his attention. I said, you don't want to get his attention. But anyway, as time went, Joab talked to David, and David finally allowed Absalom to come home and stay in the same same place, but not seem. For two years, Absalom dwelt in the same town, in the same place. And David never seen him. You say, oh, that's terrible. Then why is it that sometimes our teenagers can be two doors down in a room all by themselves and you barely even know them? You barely even know them. You don't talk to them. You don't go out in the yard with them. You're too busy making a living. If you're too busy to make a living to take time for your kids, your living's too big. Would you help me just a little while? And now I see it. Now I see it. It's a day Absalom finally gets to come before the king. And he comes down and he ain't seen his dad in two years. And his dad looks at him and he sees the blood of Amnon. His daddy looks at him and he sees his failure. That he wasn't there for him. The Bible says that he kissed Absalom. But oh, that kiss was colder than the North Pole. And it told Absalom 
there can be no restoration. And Absalom got bitter. I'll show you. I'll show you. And he went out to the gate and he took the very kingdom from his dad. And the terror of the story goes even deeper. And now you've got a whole nation from one event. Are you listening to me? One event. One event. Now before the whole nation, he's got David's concubines on the roof. Are you listening to me? All because of one event. One single action. And now it comes to the time David and it's a too long of a story to go into but David is going to get the kingdom back. And you remember Joab? You know he was the one that Absalom set his fields on fire. Joab never forgets. Are you listening to me? Joab never forgets. Now David said to him, Brother Brooks, David said to him, do the boy no harm. Don't, don't, don't hurt Absalom. Even though he's took the kingdom from him, even though he's went into my concubines, and even though he's slain Amnon, don't hurt the boy. Don't hurt the boy. Oh God. And then Joab goes out and the battle turns against Absalom and Joab and his men overtake him. And now it's bad. And now what's bad's turning worse. Absalom is fleeing for his life and his, his long flowing hair gets caught up in the boughs of an oak tree and, and all at once the mule runs out from underneath him and there is that one man that everybody admired. There's that young man without a blemish. There's that young man with all of those potentials. There's that young man that could have really been something. There's that young man that everybody loved. There's that young man that everybody honored. There's that young man that could have done about anything there was to do and now he hangs in an old tree by the hair of his head at the mercy of the devil and Absalom is slain There he's slain. Darts are cast through his heart. Darts are thrust through his heart. He dies. And that brother brings me to my text of shattered dreams. What could have been? What should have been? Oh God, I'm talking to somebody. But can you imagine had it been just a little bit different? Had it been just a little bit different? Derek, go to the back of the church, son. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hurry up. Make haste, boy. Amen. Can you imagine what it would have been if things could have turned out like it did in the New Testament? When that boy had wasted all that he had on riotous living. And his clothes were tattered. And his body stunk like the pigs that he was living with. He, he tried his best. I believe, I believe with all my heart, he tried, he tried his best. He probably, this, this is my commentary, Brother Slogan. He probably stopped by a stream and maybe splashed a little water on his face. Maybe even tried to wash his clothes off little bit but he came to himself oh god help me right now he came to himself <laughs> 
<laughs> Amen. And he said, how many servants in my father's house have bread enough to spare, but I'm dying. Oh, I'm dying. I want to show you the difference in the father of the prodigal son that David, that boy come walking down to the road. Amen. And his dad realized it was him. Amen. And the dad ran out to meet him. Amen. I said, the dad ran out to meet him and he wrapped his arms around him and he kissed him. Would you help me just a little while? It's a lot different in the way. Amen. That we kiss somebody that tells him where we are. Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking, please. Before, before this thing gets any more tangled in your life, I got one word for you. Somebody needs to show some love tonight. Amen. Some mama, some daddy, some some brother, some sister. Somebody needs to reach out with love and realize that person is problems. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your sweet Holy Ghost penetrate the heart that are in this building tonight. Don't let one young person, don't yet let one young family, don't let one... Oh, oh God, right there, please. Lord, I feel this. God, please, don't let one miss bit of mistrust in one another. Don't let one bit of lack of communication between each other drive a wedge in my home tonight. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Let them wake up tonight. 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 Let them wake up. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Young person, won't you get it fixed tonight? Young person, won't you get it fixed tonight? Oh. Young couple, why don't you get it prayed through tonight? Amen. Why don't you get a hold of it and realize you can't go on like you're going? Why don't you get a hold of it and realize that the devil will tear it all apart in one single act if you ain't careful? Amen. Don't let that wedge be driven in your heart. Don't let that bitterness come in. Don't let that lust get a hold of you. Don't let those dreams get a hold of you. Amen. That leads you away from God. Don't let us have to pick up the pieces of a shattered life. I said, don't let us have to pick up the pieces of another shattered life that shouldn't have ended that way. Don't let us have another mama crying at the altar. Don't let us have another daddy pleading with the pastor for help. Would you please tonight just not do it? Just... I don't know how to make this altar call. It seems out of place to come stand. But it seems more in place. If you would just stand up. That we would run to you. And help you home. If we could just run to you. 
and help you get home. Don't let that boy talk you into something that you don't want to do. Please pray, church. Please pray. I know for a surety the Holy Ghost is speaking. I don't know why he's not chosen to interpret up to this point. But it could be because you have mercy being applied right now. I'm hoping that you'll please make the break right now. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to lose this. I. I don't want nobody to grieve the Holy Ghost right now. I think we need to stretch our hands all over this building and say, "Lord, speak to us." Could we do that, Father? Please have your way. Have your way. Holy Ghost, is it talking to us? Are you listening? He's talking to us. Are you listening? He's a pleading with you. Amnon, there's help for you. Tamar, there's healing for you. Absalom, there's help for you. Do you hear me? There's help for you. It don't have to turn out this way. It don't have to turn out in tragedy. It can turn out in triumph. Would you break free from where you're at right now? Lay down your pride. Lay down your pride. Come to the altar and say, Lord, I'm struggling with this. I need help with this tonight. I feel like the Holy Ghost, if He wanted to, He could call out your sin right now. I know He could. But I feel like He's choosing not to because He's granting you mercy. But I want you to rest assured tonight if you turn away His mercy, I can stand on this platform tonight and say it will be found out soon. It will be found out soon. And it will be hid from no one. Because I need you to realize right now, 
be sure your sins will find you out. I'm not scaring nobody. No scare tactics. Just the word of God. God's granting you mercy now. Nobody has to know but you and God. But you, you shun His mercy. I said you shun His mercy. And it won't be long before you yourself will see the broken pieces of your shattered dreams. And you'll say, what ever come over me? I didn't mean to make you so mad at me tonight. I hope I haven't. But I've got to be honest with you. I don't want to see you do something that's going to bring so much hurt. Please, please think about what you're doing. Please. Think about what you're saying. Could you please think about the implications? Think about what's being implied. Think about the complications that's getting ready to happen because of what you're getting ready to do. My last word to you tonight is come. Come. wait on nobody else don't think somebody's going to think you're a big sinner I'm just telling you you need to come you need to come come right now come right now I'm going to put up this microphone I have done what the Lord has asked me to do tonight I have preached to you with a burden about shattered dreams. Might I say, this young lady is not the only one. I, I, I want a few come to pray with her, but not everybody just yet. Not everybody just yet, because I want you to know right now, the Holy Ghost is not through. Because there is several here that should have came that has not came, and I know it. Now somebody else needs to come. More than one. More than one. More than one. More than one. And they're not all unmarried. Are you hearing me? I said, and they're not all unmarried. You need to come. You need to come. You need to come. Young person, don't let the devil destroy you. Young lady, he's not worth it. He's not worth it. Young man, you don't need to go there. Young man, it would be better off for you to never go on the internet than for you to do what you're doing. It would be better.
I'm not getting in the way. I'm just telling you, you better do what God asks you to do tonight. Get it fixed. Get it fixed. Get it fixed. Get it fixed. I'm not coming to you. You don't have to worry. I'm not coming to you. I wouldn't embarrass you for the world. I, I love you too much, but I'll tell you right now. I sure don't want to see you do what you're doing. Would you please stand with me all over the building? I'm not going to tarry any longer. I've delivered my heart in this revival. I gave you, I gave you what God has given me. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost take it from here. I can't do no more. Please come. Please come. Please come. Please come. But mom will think terrible of me. But daddy will think terrible of me. But my husband will think terrible of me. But my wife will think No. I'll tell you what. If you'll come, I promise you. Me and Brother Daryl, he'll tell you. We'll meet you right here. And we'll weep with you and we'll cry with you. And we'll pray until those fears and those things that's got a hold of you are gone. Please don't let the devil shatter your dreams. Please don't let the devil shatter your dreams. This is the part of altar call I do not like because it is the part of the altar call that my heart's telling me he's called and they're turning him off. Would you please, if you feel any inkling at all, would you please come? Would you please come? Would you please come? Would you please come? The only thing I can ask you to do from right now is to please. Raise your hands towards heaven and ask God for mercy. Where'd you do that? I wish you'd obey the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking in this place right now to hearts and lives. Please don't say no. Please don't say no. I'm going to turn this over to the shepherd of this flock momentarily. He's telling me to go on. Can I ask you to do something? Can I ask you to do something and you not not be offended with me, please? Can I ask 
those that I ask for 40 years old down to 14, could you, could you just humor me and come to the front? Married, unmarried, if, if you don't mind. Could you, husband and wife, you want to come together? That's great. This, would that be okay, brother, this time if husband and wife this time? Would it, be, would it be okay if husband and wife just comes down and pray together? Would, would you come, dad and, dad and, and boy, dad and, dad and, dad and girl, would you, would you please just come down here? If you don't, don't have somebody to pray with you, my, my wife will come and, 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 and I'll come. And, and I, want you, I want you to write down, if you just stretch your hands towards heaven and ask God to help all of these around this altar right now. Could you do that? Everyone that will, let's come in. Let's come in now behind these. Let's come in behind these. There's some, there's some, there's some folks that need help right now, Brother Darrell. There's some folks that need help.